Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Swati Kar, consultant neurologist at IV Hospital, Mohali. So today we are going to talk about Botox. We'll talk about Botox in neurology. So first, we'll, I like to give you the introduction about Botox. What is Botox all about? Botox is a botulinum toxin produced by bacterium Clostridium tetanus. Botulinum or Botox as branded by millions of people used uh, most widely by women and men as a cosmetic tool for erasing wrinkles. But very few of us know that Botox is, was originally discovered for neurological debilitating conditions like dystonia. And it was not only for the erasing wrinkles, it was originally discovered for dystonia and many other neurological conditions like blepharospasm, hemifacial spasm, cervical dystonia, hyperhidrosis, siloria, post hoc spasticity, neuropathic pain, post hepatic neuralgia, and chronic migraine population. So it's indicated in wide number of conditions. So if we talk about botulinum toxin, it's a toxin and there are four formulations of botulinum toxin. It's botulinum toxin type A and botulinum toxin type B. Now botulinum toxin type A uh, has three formulations and botulinum to toxin type B has one formulation. These are FDA approved formulations and they have uh, named as generic names and the brand names. Generic names are the names as assigned by FDA and brand names as we all know. So if we talk about the botulinum toxin type A, first is the onto botulinum toxin type A which is known as Botox. The second one is able botulinum toxin type A which is known as the sport. Third one is inkel botulinum toxin type A known as Zeman and the fourth one is Botulin toxin type B, which is Rima botulin toxin type B, known as MyBlock in US and it's known as NeuroBlock in Europe. So it's a very powerful therapeutic agent. So Botox, when injected, first it's purified and then we inject if a right amount is injected into the right muscle, the appropriate muscle where it needs to be get injected by a qualified physician it becomes a very powerful therapeutic agent in neurology are to reduce the muscle spasm and then second one is to reduce the overactivity of the muscles and to reduce the pain third one is to improve the quality of life and the fourth is to improve the daily functions of living in the patient suffering from these debilitating diseases. Now the improvement is time bound, it's uh, time limited, it lasts for few months only and Botox has to be repeated after every three to four months. Now talking about Botox in neurology, there are uh, several conditions like uh, I have, uh, as I have already told uh, uh, dystonia blepharospasm, hemifacial spasm, uh, cervical dystonias and then is the siloria, siloria is excessive delivery, drooling and then is the hyperhidrosis is excessive sweating and uh, post opacity. So first let's talk about dystonia. So what is dystonia? Dystonia we have a motor programming, uh, programming in the brain and this motor programming in brain uh, has to do a certain movement. If he needs to uh, perform, uh, have to perform a certain movement or have to bring a, a body in a certain posture and if there is a wrong implementation or it has been implemented inappropriately, the positioning will go in a distorted positioning. It will be like if it's a hand stone, it'll, the positioning will go like this. So basically it's an abnormal tone of the muscle and the particular part of the body gets distorted or get into a twisted position. This is what is known as dystonia. So dystonia could be either focal or it could be generalized. Now talking about focal dystonias. Focal dystonias means the dystonias is only on one part of the body. That is if, if it involves the eyes, it could involve the neck. If it involves the eyes, it's known as 
blepharospasm. What is blepharospasm? Blepharospasm means involuntary contraction of the eyelid muscles. The eyelid muscles are suddenly involuntary contraction, which could be due, uh, which could be due to sunlight. Now, hemifacial spasm, the sudden contraction of one side of the face. Patients, हमारे पास usually आते हैं कि हमारा face फट फट आ रहा है, तो there's a twitching of the face, so one side of the face that's known as hemifacial spasm. Then cervical dystonia. These are the muscles of the neck. If there is uh, the muscles tend to pull the neck to one side. and when the patient wants to bring it back but due to pain and spasm of the neck muscles patient can't do it this is like in cervical dystonias we see it and the dystonias could be generalized now the generalized dystonias are mainly seen in kids and kids we mostly go for the medical treatment focal dystonias is seen in elderly population 40 to 50 years of the age group medical treatment we are little bit uh, due to cognitive issues we don't go for the medical treatment because botox is fda approved treatment for dystonias so what does exactly uh, if you talk about botox what is exactly botox do we have a chemical messengers which go to brain so botox usually prevent those messengers going there the neurotransmission so which results in the weakness of the muscle so the most important thing in dystonia in treating dystonia is recognizing the right muscle and where to inject for that a careful clinical examination is must and emg guided botox has to be given so why emg guided hame basically a uh, muscle ki over activity dekhni hai jab muscle over active hoti hai usi ki wajah se abnormal posturing aur positioning hoti hai so what we do is we select the muscle emg needle hum dalte hain usme dekhte hain muscle over active kaun si hai and through that emg guided needle we inject botox into a particular muscle so this is emg guided botox uske baad uh we have to basically make the muscle normally active jo over active muscle hota hai usko normally active karna hota hai and this is how we can relieve the symptoms of pain in such patients now after talking about dystonia uh we'll talk about the next condition which is siloria so talking about siloria what is siloria siloria is an excessive drooling uh so of saliva from one side of the angle of the mouth now this is seen basically in patients who are suffering from cerebral palsy parkinson's disease can result in uncontrollable siloria for any of one side of the angle of the mouth uh this is a profound uh drooling of saliva it can cause extreme discomfort to the patient and can profoundly affect the quality of life of the patient now what we do is first we need to know that the uh, saliva is manufactured in the parotid glands here and in the submandibular glands here so what we do uh, we inject botox in the small amount of botox is injected into both the parotid glands on each side and it knocks down the condition of siloria and we use a tuberculin syringe this is uh, the syringe we use basically for botox injection this is a syringe we use so the next condition is hyperhidrosis what is hyperhidrosis is this is the excessive sweating of the palms of the hands excessive sweating underarms here we again inject the botox and we treat this condition now after all this uh if talking about writer's cramp let's discuss what is writer's cramp this is again a very important clinical condition where dystonia is again fda approved so writer's cramp when we write something see hands or fingers go into spasm so handwriting becomes illegible what happens is the person can't write for a longer time and this usually happens in people who are writing the exams who works in court who do a lot of documentations who are writers now this writer's cramp has been reported since 18th and 19th century and the incidence is 6 to 7 per lakh age group commonly affected is 20 to 50 years so whenever they write hand what happens is hand goes into other flexion or an extension position or at, uh, it assumes an abnormal posturing of the hand so this is what the writer's cramp is now it can even run in families 20% we see can occur in families now the writer's cramp can occur as 
primary. Primary means only right is cramp is there, no other associated condition is there. Secondary is secondary to a primary diagnosis like if patient is having segmental dystonia, patient is having generalized dystonia or a patient having any genetic mutation that can lead to right is cramp. There are certain task specific dystonias. Now what are task specific dystonias? Like musicians who play guitars or pianos, right? And then the typewriters working the same, same uh, work they do, barbers, the shoemakers, these are task specific dystonias. What exactly happens is we are doing a constant and a repetitive action effect, like playing a piano is a constant and a repetitive action. That would go into a particular dystonic portion and that is what a uh, dystonia is all about. So treatment is medical, uh, occupational therapy is also given to such patients, mirror therapy has also been given to such patients but the best treatment for this writer cramps is botulinum toxin which is given after three months. It's given to hyperactive muscles again as I've already said. We do the EMG. So what EMG guided botox is we ask the patient to write. We see which muscle is the overactive muscle. We inject the botox into this muscle and the patient is relief of the symptoms. So multimodal therapy works in writer's cramp. Then the next condition we come to chronic migraines. Chronic migraines our first preference is for the medical treatment. So what we do in that medical treatment is first we put the patient on prophylaxis. Now that prophylaxis is, could be either of two drugs. We put the patient on two drugs and the patient is refracted to that treatment. That means there is no improvement in symptoms of the headache. Headache lasts for more than 15 days a month. We label it as a chronic migraine and then we go for injection botox treatment. So what we have is we have pain receptors, the face, head and neck, we have pain receptors. When we inject Botox, see pain receptors, there's a sensory, there are sensory receptors, they transmit the pain to the brain and this is how we perceive the pain. So what Botox do? It blocks the pain. See the, we won't be able to feel the pain. So Botox is given for the chronic migraine patient, the number of the areas are injected in the head and the back of the neck and the patient is relieved of the symptoms. And the next condition we talk about is the spasticity. Now talking about spasticity, what is spasticity? It's the abnormal muscle contraction of arm or any part of the leg. And spasticity is most commonly seen in post-stroke patients. Stroke ke patients do regular physiotherapy, nahi karte hai, jo regular exercises, nahi karte hai, they land in spasticity. And uh, in uh, head or brain trauma patients, we see in cerebral palsy patients, multiple sclerosis patients, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So these are the number of conditions which where we see the spasticity. Again, what we see, what we do is, we first is small amount of Botox is injected again into the muscle which is responsible for the spasticity and again it blocks the transmission and the stiffness of the muscle decreases. Again, it has to be repeated after every three months. So these are the all conditions I have discussed in detail. This is dystonia. We have talked about blepharospasm. We have talked about hemifacial spasm. One important thing, you don't go for EMG guided bottom toxin for facial muscles because these are very small muscles. So EMG guided uh, bottom toxin is used for the neck muscles, hand muscles, leg muscles, which are big muscles. They are not small muscles. So bottom toxin, if I have to conclude, is one of the most promising treatment in neurological pain and the muscular uh, this, uh, this uh, muscular dysfunctions and uh, spas spasticity, muscular spasms, most promising. So anyone with any of the above mentioned complaints which I have just discussed in detail about all these neurological uh, conditions where you dystonia, if any of the person suffers and if, the, if they feel that the conservative treatment has failed and it's not working. I think you should consider injection bottom toxin as your therapy. Bottom toxin therapy even could be the first initial choice for treating such diseases. So any potential side effects of injection, if present, they are temporary and they disappear quickly. So we don't have to worry about the, uh, the side effects of the botox. It's important, very, very important to make an accurate diagnosis and injection botox in appropriate dosage to be given in appropriate muscle 
by a qualified physician will relieve the symptoms of the neurological symptoms. It's a highly effective treatment. So if a neurological pain or spasticity persists after the more conservative treatments, I think it's a time to rethink what is known as Botox. Thank you. So let's answer the questions. Let's see. Can Botox help with trigeminal neuralgia? Uh, yes, sir. Botox does help with trige uh, trigeminal neuralgia patients. I've already said the pain. it's used in uh, uh, neurological conditions and neuropathic pains. It's used in post herpetic neuralgia is used and yes, it is used in trigeminal neuralgia, sir. The next, does Botox cause paralysis? Sir, uh, Botox, we have to basically, Botox is given into the hyperactive muscles. So we are basically uh, paralyzing the muscle in the sense, we are decreasing its activity to bring it to the normal. We are not basically paralyzing the muscle. We are in the overactive muscles. We are injecting the Botox to bring it to the normal function of the muscle so that it can work normally as the other muscles are doing. So this is how the Botox works. No sir, Botox doesn't lead to vomiting. Once the injection, Botox is injected, we basically ask the patient to do not rub the areas for one day. And no, it does not lead to vomiting sir. The next question, can Botox cause neurological problems? Sir, so as I've already said, Botox, uh, if the side effects are there, these are reversible side effects and they disappear. They don't, they are not permanent side effects for the Botox. And Botox helps in the neurological problems, rather uh, causing a neurological problems. So side effects, I've already said, they're very temporary side effects. Uh, this question. Sir, uh, Botox, can Botox help with facial nerve damage without any harm? Sir, Botox can, is uh, used for blepharospasm, we use it for uh, hemifacial spasm. If injected properly, again, I've said by a qualified physician, it will, will not lead to any of the harms. It's injected in trigeminal neuralgias also. So again, I've said the appropriate amount of Botox injected in right muscle will lead to the relief in the symptoms. Next question. I think I have answered most of the questions. Just right. So please do visit us at Ivy Hospital Mahali if any of the patients is suffering from any of the above conditions which I have mentioned. Thank you.